Hello and welcome to the video. This is the second video of a two-parter where we're going to put this frame together. This is the Bolt RC Works Kraken frame. This is the five inch version. And in the last video, I put the speed controllers and the motors on here so that it's ready to build out. And by the end, we'll have it all ready to go out and fly. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time in this video going through each of the individual steps, why we're doing certain things. If you're interested in building a quadcopter and you want a series of instructions that take you through step by step from the very early parts all the way through and explain why you're doing every step, then there are a number of series on the channel. Check out the playlist. They're called Quadcopter Building for Beginners, and I've got three or four series on that. The idea with this video is to concentrate on the specific things that you need to think about for this frame here. Now we are going to add our flight controller, our video transmitter, camera and receiver all onto this frame and it all needs to fit under this little polycarbonate shell and that's part of the difference of this frame if you haven't seen any of the other previous videos this little frame is a little bit different it's been flown by some of the top racers around and it's designed to be very very lightweight. I'm going to be using a slightly different setup here. I'm going to be using the Holybro F4 flight controller and also the Holybro Atlatl, which is a smart video transmitter that I can control through the Betaflight OSD. The reason for that is that I'm probably going to end up cutting a slot in the side of this so that I can access the USB port for the flight controller, but I won't be able to get in under the canopy to do things like changing bands and settings and power and all that kind of good stuff. I, that's all going to be hidden away underneath this canopy. So I need to be able to change everything from the on-screen display. The other reason I'm using this flight controller and this video transmitter is this is the setup or very close to what was inside the recent Coppice One review that we did. Now Hollybro produced the Coppice One and myself and actually lots of other reviewers looking on YouTube thought it was pretty fabulous. So I'm going to take all of those great ideas and I'm going to lift and shift the flight controller and the Atlatl video transmitter. I'm going to pop it in this case and now hopefully we're going to have lots and lots of room in here so we're not going to have a problem i'm going to have to figure out where the video antenna is going to go we're going to have to figure out a couple of things here because it's not a traditional frame and because there aren't the additional decks that you have to put everything onto we're going to have to think about it a little bit as we go through the build now before we go any further, I need to say a massive thanks to the guys at Bolt RC and also the guys at dronebit.co.uk who have been helping get all the pieces here because we're using some of the latest and greatest including the new battery strap that Bolt RC have come out which really makes this thing look fantastic. When it's all together, it is almost too pretty to fly. It's probably the best looking quadcopter that I've ever personally built and I've built a lot of them. So I'll put links in the description if you want to go and get some of the pieces and let's crack on and I'll show you how I've put this thing together. First thing to think about is installing the flight controller and attaching the power and the ESCs into the corner. Now the Hollybro board is very well laid out. It's designed for a quadcopter, so there's an ESC connector in each corner. Once you've got it installed with the arrow pointing to the front, then it's a very simple matter to connect the ESC control wires to the ground and the motor connections. The other reason that I'm using this flight controller is you can run it straight off the battery. So I'm just going to attach this cable here to the battery pads that will provide full 4S battery voltage and I'm going to solder that onto the side of the flight controller and that's the power taken care of and then I can snip the ESC wires to length and solder them onto those pads in each corner and that's the ESC connections taken care of as well. So that's a very very neat way of doing it. The only thing extra I did do is I did put some of the little black spacers that come in the Bolt RC kit. You get a ridiculous number of different kind of bolts and screws and separators and nylon pieces to put this thing together so you have lots of flexibility. In that kit is a couple of black washers and I've put one of those under each of the corners of the flight controller just to make sure that there's enough room underneath for me to route the power cable out the way. I'm trying to make this as neat as I possibly can because I don't want to paint the canopy. I want to leave it nice and clear so I can see the LEDs and I think it looks nicest that way. Next thing we need to do is attach the camera. I'm going to use the good old Eagle from Runcam. This is actually the Eagle 2. It's the metal cased frame. Unfortunately, I didn't have an Eagle with a plastic case, but this metal one will be fine. It'll make it weigh a little bit more, uh, so I might swap this out later on. 
I've taken the cable out of that kit and I've soldered it onto these three pads here. Now, and again, the nice thing is, is that the board is quite well designed. So those pads are up here on the side at the front of the board. So the side by side, very quick and easy job to do that. Then we need to attach the cable that comes with the Atlatl Holybro video transmitter. And that has four wires on it. The red and black are for power. Now that again can be connected directly to battery power, which makes this super simple to do. And the other two wires, one is for video out. We're gonna connect that onto the video out pin. And the other one is to connect it to UART6. And that's going to be set for IRC tramp. That will allow me to then control the video transmitter through the Betaflight on-screen display. Now there are nylon spacers that you can use in the kit that will separate them pretty spot on. Uh, in the interest of keeping it as low profile as I possibly could, I personally printed a couple of spacers using the 3D printer at just about six millimeter height. But if you have six millimeter nylon spacers, they'll give you the right spacing between the flight controller and the video transmitter. Because you want to make sure that nothing is pressing on that vibration isolated IMU mount. Now, once I've got those two pieces in, next thing to do is make sure that I have room in here. So I've test fit the camera. And to attach the camera to the bracket, you, there are bolts in the kit. I had to go and find myself a couple of two millimeter bolts. Because this isn't a plastic, can't use the screws that come as part of the Bolt RC kit. I had to find a couple of two millimeter screws that I could bolt it onto here. Sadly, they weren't identical, but that's why you need to keep all of the screws whenever you build something. If you have spares, put them in a little tin. With that inside the canopy, I can see that actually I've got more room than I expected in here. So I've got room to mount my radio receiver and move the cables around as well. Now the thing I was thinking about as I was doing this part of the build was where am I gonna put the video transmitter? Now there is a little mark on the back of the canopy that we can also open up and that can hold the video transmitter and it can come out the back. I was a big fan of that. I like the canopy being nice and clear. The more holes you put in this canopy, the more compromised it's going to be in terms of strength. So I'm going to have this flying lead stuck out the back and I'm going to zip tie it on top of the power connection. That way we'll have a bit of strain relief and it'll be coming out the back like most of the modern racers and flyers that you tend to see these days as well. Now I know which holes I need. I need to make the holes in the canopy. Now this is a little bit tricky. This is a polycarbonate shell. You're going to have to melt the holes into it that you need. Now I used a sacrificial soldering iron tip and I pushed the sacrificial soldering iron tip through each of the dints that are around. There are four for the main holding bolts that are gonna connect the polycarbonate shell to the frame. And there's two additional ones for each side to screw into the side of the bracket that's going to hold the camera. The only other hole we're going to need is at the front for the camera. I'm not going to have it at a ridiculous angle. Uh, I don't fly like that. So I'm going to have it towards the bottom. And I ended up using a knife here once I got the initial hole started with the soldering iron and then used a bit in a Dremel just to open it up and just being very careful to finish the edges with a bit of heat to make sure that no micro cracks are started there. The last thing I did was just do a little notch in the back of the frame just for a bit of strain relief to help that video transmitter cable coming out the back give it a little bit more room. Whenever you're putting one of the bolts through the polycarbonate frame through those holes we've just made you need to use one of the little fiber washers just to protect the polycarbonate plastic too. So make sure that you've always got one of these little red washers around so you always have that underneath whatever you're screwing into the polycarbonate just to help protect it. Okay, now I've got a rough idea what room I have. I'm going to mount the receiver on top of the video transmitter. The video transmitter will get relatively warm in use. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. We'll see how that copes. When it's flying around, there will be a little bit of airflow through the canopy, not a huge amount, but I'm not gonna be running at really high uh, milliwatt settings anyway. If you were going to, you'd have to put the optional heat sink you get with this on top and probably mount the radio receiver somewhere else. 
plugged into beta flight standard beta flight settings we need to make sure that those two uarts that we have set up are properly configured uart3 needs to be set for a serial receiver i'm using a little xn plus receiver here uh, you could use something a little bit bigger you've got the smart port telemetry pin you've got the rssi pin on the flight controller i'm trying to keep this as light as i can uart6 is then set for the irc trump protocol because that's where we have plugged the Atlatl video transmitter into. While we're talking about things like the RSSI pin, let me just very quickly cover the other optional connections that I could have made here. Uh, we have a current pin for a current uh, analog current sensor. We have got this on this frame, so I'm not using that. There are the connections for an LED. So you have the WS2812 uh, controllable LEDs on here too. Again, I'm not gonna put those in this frame uh, just for lightness. If I can find a super lightweight mini LED and buzzer setup, I might consider popping one inside the frame just because I do have that space. We have connections there for the buzzer and at the bottom of the board, the only other connection is the RSI connection for an analog RSSI input. Now the other thing that I did here is I flashed the firmware on the XM Plus to be the latest firmware that puts the RSSI value out on channel 16. So by selecting auxiliary 12, as the RSSI value in the receiver tab of Betaflight, the RSSI value is in there too. So it's just a case of putting it all together and here it is in one piece. Here's the total all at weight with a 4S1300 graphene battery. Again, I could probably save myself six or seven grams on this weight by swapping the camera out to a plastic enclosed one and I might do that later on. So hopefully that helps those of you that have been interested in this frame. Uh, I'm using the Dell Prop uh, Cyclones on this. Again, surprise, surprise, got it in that nice orange color to match everything, all the anodized pieces. We've got that beautiful battery strap underneath as well. Uh, there are tons and tons of bolts and pieces that will be left over at the end of the build. Again, it's provided with everything you need, including lots of different options for the different pieces. Uh, hopefully that helps those of you that are looking or were interested in the, how this frame went together probably took me three hours i know some people who can build this thing in about 45 minutes this was the first one for me and i was really taking my time because i wanted it to look as fab as it possibly could underneath that wonderful polycarbonate shell so thank you to everybody who asked for the build videos of how this thing went together hopefully that gives you another option for your next build Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.